Hi, uh, welcome back to CMSC A2080, Vision Planning and Control in Aerial Robotics. Today we will be talking about one of the most basic concepts related to quad rotors, that is quad rotor dynamics. So the idea here is to learn about the physics involved in actually being able to fly a quad rotor. Uh, we will eventually use these concepts to design control strategies for ma making autonomous quad rotors to fly. So the first question everybody is going to ask is why is dynamics important? Let's say you have a quad rotor, which is shown on the left hand side of the frame here, and you want to go into the right hand side of the frame. Uh, the idea is the quad rotor has to tilt and then go to the right hand side. But the more important thing here is that you cannot just tilt and go and stop at the same point. To be able to stop at the point B, you need to tilt or roll right then almost become constant hover and then roll back so that you decelerate that's the idea here how does how does one mathematically determine how much to tilt and uh, when to tilt and stop and so on that's what dynamics gives us so more formally the time or the shape of the motion which makes you go from point A to point B depends upon the mass distribution or the moment of inertia matrix. And this will in turn indirectly be manifested as the angle tilted. And one of the keywords to remember here is the bang bang control. That's what this image dep depicts. And later in the part of the lectures, uh, maybe the next lecture or the few more lectures, we'll be talking about bang bang control. And this image will pop up again there. So, but first let's talk about the physics involved. So the idea here is we want to we want to have an equilibrium state in which the sum of all forces and the sum of all moments is zero. That is, the quad rotor is stable when it's hovering at some at some point, and it's also holding position. So recall from fluid dynamics that the force is directly proportional to the angular velocity square. Uh, here we have put i because it i refers to each of the motors as shown in the figure. And moments generated by a propeller is in the negative direction of the angular velocity of the propeller. In this case, it would be the opposite direction. So more firmly put, the direction proportion, directly proportionality can be put, put as follows. So the force is some constant kf into omega square, and the moment is some constant km into omega square. So kf and km are basically constant, which depend upon the propellers the number of blades, the diameter, pitch, material, air viscosity, and so on. They're reasonably hard to model unless we have a really strong physics simulation engine, and they're generally assumed to be a simple quantity which are constants. In reality, these are not constants and they change with the velocity and so on, but we are not gonna be talking about that. That's for a more advanced fluid dynamics class. Next, from Newton's equations, we know that the net force is equal to the mass into acceleration. That's what is written here. F is sigma of forces you obtain from the four propellers minus mass into gravity into BG into G, B3. You, we have B3 here because we are, we are propagating this onto the coordinate frame or the body frame in terms of z-axis. That's what is written here. And the net moment is written as summation of R cross F plus summation of the moments obtained by the motors. That's clearly written in the last equation here. And we have the same quadrator as before with the world frame being denoted by capital A, which is shown in red, and the body frame denoted by capital B, which is sh shown in blue. Then, now we want to write the neutral order equations for a quadrotor. Uh, so omega of frame B represented in A can be written in terms of angular velocities of the body frame P, Q, and R uh, correspondingly for B1, B2, and B3 or X, Y, Z more formally. And that can be written as so. In the inertial frame, we have M into A or MR double dot given as 0, 0 minus MG, which is the weight where M is the mass of the quad rotor and G is the acceleration due to gravity plus R being the rotation matrix, which takes you from the body frame to the world frame into zero, zero, and sum of all the forces obtained due to each of the motor. And we will denote the sum of all the forces as the net thrust, which is U1. And recall, recall from the Euler's equation, Euler's rotation equation, 
the total moment is i omega dot plus omega cross i omega which is written in body frame here i into p dot q dot r dot will be l into f2 minus f4 and l into f3 minus f1 and m1 plus m3 minus m2 minus m4 the reason why two of the moments and two of the forces are opposite in direction is because the two of the motors spin in opposite direction to the others and they're diagonally separated and minus pqr cross i into pqr and know that the matrix here which is which involves l f and m is totally denoted as u2 and also know that u1 was an inertial frame u2 is in body frame that's clearly written here uh, u1 and u2 will be basically the two inputs which we will be controlling to make quad rotor follow a trajectory or have a stable flight and more about that in the, in the oncoming lectures now uh, let's continue with the newton euler equation for a quad rotor remember from the previous slides that f is kf into omega square m is km into omega square let let us just define a constant called gamma which is basically relate gives you a function of the air drag which is km divided by kf which is also the ratio of m divided by f and that can be written as follows and we can taking the last equation from the previous slides we can write it in terms of gamma here as shown here so this is again the same thing as before it's u2 which is the second control input which we'll be controlling in the later slides now the controller inputs which we'll be controlling as we talked about before will basically be the whole of u1 and u2 as shown here uh, u1 will be the sum of all forces f1 plus f2 plus f3 plus f4 and u2 will be the moments in x y and z direction as shown and note that everything here is in the body frame um, that concludes the presentation for quadrotor dynamics and we will be talking about controls in the next lecture see you soon bye bye